What we're going to look at next is the question of shifts in the long run aggregate supply curve. If you remember, aggregate supply, here we're showing the potential output and we're also focusing on the long run. Yeah? So the short run deals with changes in the costs of production, that shifts the short run aggregate supply curve. Here we're looking to the long term, so we're no longer really focusing on changes in the cost of production, we're, ch we're focusing on changes in the quality and quantity of factors of production. So you just need to remember that, that we're dealing here with quantity of labour, so we might be talking about the size of the workforce, questions about maybe cutting benefits, not unemployment benefit, they're already willing and able to work, they're already part of the workforce, so maybe cuts in, uh, job, in income support um, as a way to, to increase the quantity of labour, the kind of controversial uh, issues that have been raised by the coalition government in 2012 uh, by, by talking about caps on, on the amount of benefits that people should get overall uh, could be seen as this attempt to, to force them into work um, and, and to increase the quantity of labour. We could be talking about the quality of the workforce in terms of training as well. We're going to look at land. Here by land we talk about maybe quantity of land, deregulation, getting rid of the uh, regulations, the laws that protect the green belts, the environmental areas uh, outside you know, our major cities. Um, we could also be here in terms of land looking at the quality of the land as well. Uh, and here you could get into controversial issues um, such as um, you know, GM crops, is, is that improving the output per hectare of land? Or is that a case of capital as well improving? Uh, but we also be saying about just cleaning up brownfield sites, old industrial wastelands. We're going to be looking at capital. K is a shorthand for capital, das capital, rather than C being consumption. Um, how can we improve the quantity of capital uh, and the quality of capital? So there could be issues such as uh, low interest rates, keeping inflation low, uh, and that might allow long-term interest rates to be low. So a business, a private sector business, will think, if I borrow money to invest in creating new machinery, new factories, re new retail outlets, you know, if, I, if I do that long-term investment project, I'll be paying back a loan at a low rate of interest for the next few years. This is why, again, coming back to kind of monetarists, low inflation isn't just the, the outcome, the goal, they believe that low inflation economy, low and stable inflation, will allow the economy to keep interest rates low and will allow, in a sense, this, this productive capacity to grow, will allow this sort of sustained high rates of growth for Britain, moving us from, say, Y1 outwards, or, or the PPF shifting out. Um, finally, we've also got the question on, of enterprise. Here we could talk about um, Lower taxes. Will lower taxes attract more people um, to change their business location to Britain? Uh, will it encourage more people to set up in business? It's a similar argument also you can make back here about labour, that maybe cuts in income tax would also encourage people into work. You could also make a different point and say that maybe a minimum wage would encourage people into work with labour as well. The other thing about enterprise, which is true to you as six formers, is the big focus, the big push that's been given to young enterprise, to encouraging enterprise education, business startups through schools. And that's again about creating the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. And we have seen a big increase in a more of an entrepreneurial Britain in British society over the last two decades or so. What does this all mean? Well, you may recall at the start of the uh, A-level economics course that genuine economic growth is actually witnessing this production possibility frontier shifting outwards. Now that kind of sustained level of growth, of potential output, um, is, is, you know, is what we could say is genuinely economic growth. The kind of argument that you'd be seeing there is that you know, if the UK economy was growing, say 2%, year on year for a decade, we'd say, well, that's genuine growth that's occurred there. Yeah? It must be that the quality of quantity of these factors of production have lifted for the UK economy. And just as this PPF1 here has moved up to PPF2, so we are saying that the kind of supply side measures that I introduced you to 
will shift this supply side of the economy outwards. Yeah? So LRS going out to LRS1 is the same thing as PPF1 going out to PPF2. It looks great in theory. It looks like we get this higher sustained rate of economic growth, greater potential output, um, more firms setting up in business. Uh, it also looks great in the sense that with more competition, maybe migrant labour coming to Britain, maybe a higher qualified workforce leaving school, leaving university, a more competitive labour market keeps wage pressures low, means that firms on average are not putting their prices up by as much as they were before, so the lower inflationary pressure we see here. Uh, more businesses starting up, a more competitive environment would again keep inflationary levels low. So it looks great, it looks like this win-win scenario. And perhaps this is why, for, you know, again, the last few decades, starting in the 1980s, supply siders have been very dominant. And if you hear some of the politicians talking, you know, you often hear them using this kind of supply side uh, language. Um, the issue is, it's not as straightforward and, and as easy as it may seem. We've had governments using interventionist methods. So I'll just show you. We've essentially got here two supply side policies. Yep, we've got the, the interventionist ones. These are not usually associated with the mainstream of uh, supply side economics. So the kind of arguments that you say, well, if we spend more as a government on training up people, um, that, that will encourage um, uh, an improvement in the quality of the workforce. Um, other kind of interventionist policies would be, well, you know, cleaning up our industrial wastelands. Um, so this is more government spending, uh, again, boosting that productive potential, maybe grants to help small to medium-sized enterprises to set up, maybe a tax breaks by government to encourage more research and development or more subsidies really. Um, yeah, you can see there that actually this is more government we're talking about. It's very easy to slip into the language of a tax break, which actually is less intervention. So we've also instead got more of a kind of a free market view, whereby saying if government steps back, then this actually might allow uh, a greater potential output. Uh, it assumes that the private sector is more productively efficient, gains in productivity, uh, than the state. It's a big assumption to make. But what they're saying there is that if you cut income tax, it encourages people into work, cut business taxes, helps business start up, deregulate, you know, allow businesses to build on the green fields around here, um, lowers the cost of land, to, you know, it shifts that short and aggregate supply curve also out, but also increases our potential output. So this is saying more to debate in terms of um, what is going to be the most effective approach? Is it going to be interventionist, or is it versus free market, or is it a combination of the both? Uh, and then very finally, there's an argument to say, the last few decades, we've seen governments um, either doing interventionist measures or reducing government regulations, reducing government taxes, even reducing government expenditure to allow the private sector to, to crowd back in. And maybe it's just not either the case of government, it's really just what we call supply side reforms. Here, we're saying that essentially it's just business. Yeah, business, when it faces tough times like we have been seeing in recent years, what businesses will do is they'll say, how do we get better output from our given resources? You know, how do we get more out of our workforce? And they'll come up with new methods of production, new entrepreneurial ways of, of managing their staff, or new ways of creating new technology. Just as in the depths of the 1930s, we saw technological advances. So today, businesses struggling maybe are coming up with new technological advances, be it biomedical or be it uh, environmental. 
and they're saying that that might bring about by itself. A very laissez-faire, leave it alone approach. It really comes down to you as to where your assumptions lie. Do you think there's more of a role for government or the private sector to boost our potential output?